Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Jorba, and I'm a sales engineer at Qtra. Um, at Qtra, our goal is to provide simple, safe, and scalable cooling for science and quantum technologies. We are a spin-off from the Technical University of Munich, the physics department that was founded in 2018, as Alex just explained. Uh, I'm here today um, to explain how at Qtra we apply magnetic cooling um, to create novel ADR-based cryostats for applied quantum technologies. So, uh, as you know, most quantum technologies rely on Kelvin or even sub-Kelvin temperatures for their development and operation. At QTRI, we use a combination of closed cycle cooling and adiabatic demagnetization refrigeration, which is uh, magnetic cooling, in other words, to reach the sub-Kelvin temperatures necessary to enable most superconducting quantum technologies. Adiabatic demagnetization refrigeration relies on a cryocooler to cool down to 4 Kelvin, a heat switch that allows us to thermally connect or disconnect our uh, sample and ADR unit from the thermal bath, a magnet, typically an electromagnet, and a cooling unit, which is typically a paramagnet. First, the cooling medium is magnetized by ramping up the magnet, and this produces a magnetocaloric effect, so a bit of heating through magnetocaloric effect, and this heating is dissipated in the thermal bath of the, for, of the cryocooler. Once the heating is dissipated, we can open the heat switch, so we place our uh, ADR unit in an adiabatic condition, it's isolated from the thermal bath, and as we remove the magnetic field, uh, the spins in our paramagnet, the magnetic moments, want to disorder, and the only place they can take this disorder, this entropy, is from the thermal entropy of the system. So as the magnetic field is ramped down, the temperature also comes down, so we get cooling power through this. One of the issues is that once the magnetic field is over, then we need to restart this process. So compared to other uh, cooling technologies, ADR offers safe and simple operation. Since it's a solid state based technology, it does not require any cryogenic liquids. Um, also, uh, it has the advantage of having a very large temperature range, so it can work all the way from a few kelvins to a few millikelvins, and even some of the nuclear ADR technology goes to micro kelvin. And uh, last but not least, very importantly, it's a very future-proof and sustainable technology because it does not rely on the supply of helium-3, which is becoming even more um, scarce or hard to get, especially in Europe. And all this in combination make ADR a good cooling platform for the adoption of commercial use and next generation of quantum technologies. The use of ADR, which is not a very new technology, it's here since the 60s, has been limited due to some challenges to its implementation. Uh, first, in traditional implementations of ADR, there's high magnetic fields that are used, and um, these strain magnetic fields near the sample position are not compatible with most quantum technologies. Another issue is the limited um, cooling time. So as we saw before, um, ADR is typically a one-shot technique. And that, again, is not compatible, let's say, with uh, quantum computing units that need to run 24-7. And lastly, traditional ADRs have very long cooling times because we need to cool down the current start, but also these large superconducting magnets. So uh, today I will explain how we have tackled these challenges to actually uh, harvest the advantages of ADR technology while um, bypassing or omitting these um, limitations. So as I mentioned, typical implementations of ADR lead to large stray magnetic fields near the sample. The reduction of these fields is essential to study and operate quantum devices. So how do we do it? First, uh, we use compensated um, 
superconducting magnets, as you see here, it's one of them, and we have the electromagnet in the middle, and we counter wound uh, an electromagnet around it, which actually reduces very quickly the magnetic field around the sample. So it's an uh, actively compensated electromagnet. And the second measure is that we actually place the sample space quite far away from the compensated ADR magnets, about half a meter, a bit more. Uh, in combination, these two measures make that the stray magnetic fields that the ADRs generate at the sample position are in the order of Earth magnetic field or even lower. This way, like in many other cryostats, we can simply create a zero field area by putting a magnetic shielding around our sample space. And of course, this only works if we already have low magnetic fields because those magnetic shieldings don't work very well against strong fields. Alternatively, some quantum technologies require well-defined magnetic field. And for this purpose, a large sampling magnet can be installed. Uh, and this does not interfere with the ADR operation. So uh, by using uh, compensated magnets and by increasing the distance uh, between the magnets and the sample space, we're able to decouple ADR operations, so the cooling process, from the magnetic field at the sample position. So that's already a very good milestone. Then the next challenge is the one-shot operation or the cooling time. Um, at Qtra, we have recently launched the first and only commercially available continuous ADR cryostats. So instead of having one cooling unit, we have two cooling units, which we use in uh, serial configuration. The ADR unit closer to the sample is used to control the sample temperature, while the assisting ADR unit uh, switches between the sample ADR and the cryocooler to renovate the cooling power of the system. To do that, we use two heat switches that we um, control, uh, that are mechanically controlled. <coughs> Sorry. And um, this allows us to act, automate this process much easier. So how does it work? Um, the ADR unit close to the sample, as I mentioned here in blue, is used to control the sample temperature and allows us to have a very good control. While the assisting ADR unit in yellow can be driven to a slightly lower temperature than the sample ADR. And at this point, we can <coughs> demagnetize it while we magnetize the sample ADR so the cooling power is transferred to the sample ADR. And once the assisting ADR unit is over, we can bring it back to 4 Kelvin by switching the heat switches. <coughs> and this process can then be repeated infinitively to provide continuous power. Um, we have fully automated this process with an intelligent software to offer precise and continuous control down to 300 millikelvin. Um, running CADR in such a way is also very interesting because as I said, ADR has a wide temperature range. <coughs> so we can control the temperature at any temperature between the base temperature and all the way to room temperature. So um, here, for instance, we have a very low noise measurement of the resistivity of a sample. We see a superconducting transition there. And in the X axis, we have time. So this was done um, over uh, 300 minutes with a RAM rate of 100 millikelvin per minute. So very well controlled RAM rate. And at some point, the intelligent software switches from ADR control to cryocooler and heater. And it is all just behind in the background and taken care of by the software. This is very useful, for instance, to characterize material samples for quantum technologies because we can get very low noise measurements. And most of the sub-Kelvin cooling technologies will <coughs> struggle to cover such a large temperature range. Uh, the last challenge that I wanted to address here is the cooling time. Uh, to circumvent this problem, we always keep the cryostat cold and rely instead on fast sample loading. So the solid state nature of ADR means fast. It means that we can keep the cryostat cold all the time. And since there's no cryogenic liquids in there, we can 
load our uh, warm sample into the sample stage using our proprietary automatic sample loader. And to do that, we use some uh, packs. I can show you later if you're interested in our booth, uh, where the samples can be loaded and then simply inserted into the cryostat. From there, um, the cooling process starts, and within less than three hours, uh, base temperature of 100 millikelvin can be reached. So first, the pack thermalizes with the cryo cooler to four kelvin in about one hour, one and a half hours, and then the ADR magnets are charged, <coughs> Sorry. and the cooling process continues down to base temperature. So uh, we put together all these technologies that I just described in the L-type rapid cryostat. This system can run from 100 millikelvin all the way to room temperature. It has this uh, fast um, sample loader. And if you're interested, we also have a demonstrator of how the sample loader works uh, at our booth. And all these make the L-type rapid a unique cryostat for fast testing and characterization of material samples and quantum devices. As an example, we performed a characterization of a superconducting resonator. It was an aluminum-based one. Uh, accounting so for typical measurement of one to three hours with a proper VNA, uh, we can have a full measurement cycle of about six hours for a full characterization of a resonator. This allows to get very fast feedback on the fabrication of these devices, for instance. So just to show you some data, we characterized the power dependence of the internal quality factor at 100 millikelvin, and then we characterize the temperature dependence at a given power output, and we retrieve very nice data. So uh, now moving on to what else we do. We, this year we also delivered um, two units of our new system, the S-type optical. It's based on the same cooling technology, so it provides continuous sub-Kelvin operation. Uh, with ADR technology, but instead of having the fast sample loader on top, we packed it very tightly in a 19-inch rack, and we allowed uh, optical access at the top. So this is more um, thought as a platform for optical quantum technologies and material science. We're also working on the S-type uh, quantum platforms, which are designed for long-term operation of quantum devices. Using our technology, we plan a future-proof and sustainable cooling platform completely independent of rare helium-3. Finally, we also offer measurements as a service as a cost-effective way to get results quickly uh, while ensuring expert support through our new project. So um, we have some of these L-type rapids in our um, offices, uh, which we use for measurements as a service and development. And having such a fast and easy to use system allows us to be very competitive when offering uh, cryogenics as a service. So as a summary, I hope I could show you that uh, magnetic refrigeration is a powerful tool for quantum science and technology. And that by leveraging the benefits of magnetic cooling and implementing technical solutions to its limitations, we can provide easy to use sub-Kelvin cryostats. So for more information on our products, our discussing your requirements, come visit us at our booth, D30 over there. In the exhibition area, we have, uh, as I said, a mock-up demonstrator of the L-Type Rapid. And uh, to finish, I would like to thank all my colleagues at Qtra that make all this possible with their effort and expertise. Thank you.